Every day, hundreds of blood tests are taken in hospitals all over Sweden to help advance the research on COVID-19. At the entry of SciLife Lab, blood samples from COVID-19 patients have arrived. These samples are crucial in order that scientists can continue their work. Blodgivarna. Sista givarna. Ah, spännande. Ja, mycket spännande. De står och väntar på labbet. Perfekt. Nu kör vi. Sections of SciLife Lab have been completely redesigned to be able to assist the medical field in the fight against the progression of the coronavirus. Something done to hopefully save lives. The ongoing corona pandemic is affecting Sweden and the world in many ways. Whole countries are in quarantine and people are getting sick and dying. While scientists all over the world work around the clock to find the answer, fast. The SciLife Lab Research Center is now taking a comprehensive approach to efforts linked to the COVID-19. Thanks to a 130 million crown grant from the Knuth and Alice Wallenberg Foundation, selected projects are being given immediate financing. Steve Anderson, Deputy Director at SciLife Lab, oversees and coordinates the distribution of resources. We got almost 300 applications, so there are almost 300 researchers in Sweden who are now ready to step in and help out with the kind of uh, expertise and instruments and samples that they have to help fight this disease. Several projects have already received funding. One initiative is to upscale the analysis of nose and throat samples. When the analysis materials ran out in Europe, they managed to place a massive order from China. Five tons of analysis materials and robots were sent to SciLife Lab. Three weeks after the delivery, and they are now in full swing, analyzing samples from all over Sweden. The shipment has increased capacity five-fold, focusing on testing healthcare workers. Nurses, doctors, and people working in the healthcare se uh, sector, and also uh, in the elderly sector, so we can actually protect the elderly uh, from this spread of disease. This project is headed by Lars Engstrand, professor of infectious disease. Well, it's like a Bond movie, <laughs> almost, <laughs> to get everything shipped, uh, to get everything secured, and you know the situation. We are lucky that we actually secured what we have today. Right now, we can go in and do a lot of testings to be able to see who are infected and then make sure that they stay at home and don't continue working, for example, hospitals and homes for the elderly, and thereby that they don't infect patients and old people. The corona pandemic creates an immense suffering, and it is important for the community and the healthcare system not only to know who has the infection now, but also who has already been ill with COVID-19 and how infectious the virus is. Sophia Hober, professor at KTH, is the project manager for another research project that received funding from the Knut and Alice Wallenberg Foundation and the Erling Person Family Foundation. This research examines which people have already had the disease by analyzing antibodies in blood samples. Good job. Good job. The first test group consists of hospital staff and is hoped to be able to determine who can return to work without the risk of spreading the infection. We are working with the development of immunotests, meaning that we are uh, looking or searching for antibodies that recognize the virus particle. When our body is attacked by a bacterium or virus, our immune system learns after a time what the attacker looks like and forms specialized antibodies. The antibodies trigger the entire immune system so that the body can kill that bacteria or virus that doesn't belong there. The great thing about the cells that create antibodies is that they remember what they have seen before. This enables the immune system to remember what the enemy looks like so that the next time the body is attacked, it can react much faster. This is called being immune. First, during this development phase, we will sample patients at the hospital together with all the personnel at the same hospital. 
At Danderyd's hospital, the environment is strained. Here, the blood to be analyzed is sampled and the need is great to quickly know which of the staff has been ill with COVID-19. As hospital employees, we're very vulnerable because we meet these patients all the time. So for us to know whether we have antibodies would not mean we don't need to be careful, but it will give us an increased security. Charlotte Tolin is a physician and scientist and is responsible for the collaboration between the hospital and SciLife Lab. The interest is immense to, to join this uh, study. At SciLife Lab, the results have just come in from the first test group of healthcare professionals. Here we have personnel at the hospital. And here you can see that we detected at least two persons as that have had the disease, but the rest uh, are blanks. The results from the test group show that there were some healthcare professionals who had been infected without even noticing it. It also shows how different people react to COVID-19. But the antibodies not only can show who has been ill, they may also be able to help cure COVID patients. The antibodies from the blood of recovered people can be injected into the currently sick ones. We will be able to select a few of these and that can actually be used for passive immune therapy, as it's called, meaning that their plasma will be given to patients and hopefully their immune system will get a boost in the right direction uh, thanks to this uh, plasma infusion. At Dandereed Hospital, they are also collecting patient samples in a biobank. A staff kitchen at the hospital has, in record time, been converted into a science laboratory. I think Katarina has a little snug or a quarter, and you have Lena Fedis just now. The biobank is an important part of future research on the virus. When the most urgent measures are taken, research should be able to have the best conditions. There's still so much unknown about the COVID-19 virus. So our intention is to, to share these uh, aliquots with other labs. It's just amazing to see how many people want to contribute and want to step in and do something to help out with whatever they can. The large majority have been extremely engaged, and I have never seen anything like this in my whole career. And this is now almost 40 years that I have uh, worked in science. 